Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Welcome or welcome back. I have a first impressions and walkthrough to share with you today of a Oracle deck that I have been really enjoying playing with the last couple of days. Um, I just received it. It's a deck I backed on Kickstarter. You'll know from the title of the video that the deck in question is the Phenomena Oracle deck, which is created by Jessica Bott. And this is the, the box and the back of the box includes that it's a 32 card oracle deck um, with a small instruction sheet and the creator's website thecorrectamethyst.com which I will also include in the link below. Um, now that the Kickstarter rewards have all been mailed out, the deck is also available on the creator's Etsy shop which I will also link. Uh, folks are probably familiar with Jessica Bott as a deck creator since she's created quite a few tarot and oracle decks. I've never actually owned one. Um, I do quite like her style, um, but by the time I kind of learned about her decks, the Idiosyncra deck and Amethyst Oracle were out of print, so I never did end up getting copies of those decks, but um, I was very excited to see this deck, the Phenomena Oracle, which includes a lot of um, weather and climate and natural phenomena in it. Um, it really appealed to me as a kind of nature-based deck. And I'm also really looking forward to, I'll say, she has a tarot deck in progress that's going to be called the Jessica Tarot, and it looks fantastic as well. You can see it on her website. So before I get into the uh, walkthrough, I will just share briefly uh, that it was a positive Kickstarter experience from start to finish. I really appreciated uh, for this Kickstarter that it was very kind of no frills, very straightforward. Um, there were a few uh, stretch goals, which were, I believe, improving the card stock a bit, as well as some extra cards. We ended up reaching improved card stock and one extra card, but we were close to the second extra card, so we did actually get both in the deck, which is great. It was initially a 30 card deck, but now it's 32 because of those extras. And but there were but there was no add-ons really. There were no um, you know complicated tiers to deal with. It was really just a deck, um, a wholesale box of decks, or I think a bookmark, which was a card with a hole punched and a ribbon, and that was it. So it was really well done. I thought um, every card, the art was already completed, so I knew exactly what I was getting. There was no kind of back and forth about possible changes to the deck. Everything was set in advance, you know, it was very clear. And the estimated delivery was July of this year, and I got mine in the first half of August. So, you know, particularly considering the, the global situation right now, inevitably delaying things, it was also pretty much right on time. So really good Kickstarter, very happy, um, happy with the deck. So the <laughs> one thing that I don't like about the deck <laughs> I will say is the box. Um, you can see it is a tuck box that has the little um, piece that folds down like this so you can kind of grab the cards there um, which is better than if that's not there but really this is um, you know I'll, I'll laugh at this because we've been laughing about it lately <laughs> it's it's pretty flimsy you know um, it's already you can see um, you can see the crease and I've only had this for a couple of days so it's you know I will, I will get a bag for this or make a bag for this, but this is exactly what is advertised in the Kickstarter and the very affordable price of this Oracle deck um, for an indie deck, um, you know, reflects this. So I, it's not really a complaint, right? Would I have loved maybe a little bit of a more sturdy box? Sure. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'll probably use this because it is custom printed and it is pretty, but I will put it in um, inside a bag to just keep the deck that little bit safer. It comes with a pamphlet here, Phenomena Oracle Deck, and it just has the creator's uh, website on the back. And this is just a foldout of keywords. So it provides the definition of Phenomena, since that is the, the name of the deck. Phenomena is the plural of phenomenon. 
And then phenomenon is defined as an occurrence or a circumstance that is observable or something impressive or extraordinary. So there we think about the word phenomenal, right, as something extraordinary or impressive. And the cards are listed in this little pamphlet in alphabetical order. Um, they are numbered, but the cards themselves are not numbered. So um, it is just the titles, no keywords, no nothing. Um, the title and the art, that's it. And I really like that. And what drew me to this deck again is the theme of, you know, I think of it as mostly weather and climate, but also there are things like, um, we would say natural disasters there or natural phenomena that can be natural disasters, certainly, um, in their impacts and, you know, occurrences that are celestial as well as planetary. Uh, and I think that this is a theme that really makes good sense for an oracle deck, uh, but is one that I don't see too, too often. I was thinking about in working with this deck, how so many words that we might use to describe weather or even climate are also words that could really describe um, one's inner landscape, right? Like one's, one's emotional state, one's intellectual state, one's mental state. You know, we might describe as, as being calm or being gloomy or being um, sunny, having a sunny disposition, um, being tempestuous. You know, all, all of these words are really evocative, I think, of sentiments, of feelings, as well as the phenomena that they describe. And so I think that they make really great um, kind of title keyword combinations, if you will. And it's not a theme that I've seen in a lot of oracles or tarot at all. Um, the Elemental Divination, A Dice Oracle by Stephen Ball, the book, does explore some of these uh, themes in thinking about the interactions between different elements in these kinds of ways. Uh, but overall, I think that the, the Phenomena Oracle deck is a novel idea and one that I was really happy to, to back. So this is the back of the deck. It is fully reversible. I can't imagine using this deck with reversals, but there it is. I like that it is very clean, very simple, very neutral. Um, this will look great on a table, will look great alongside lots of other decks. Um, you know, I think it's a good, um, a good look and I appreciate that there's no you know copyrights on the cards or anything like that there is on the box but not on the cards so that's great and there's lots of different phenomena represented there on the back the card stock is a 330 GSM smooth uh, card stock it is you know this probably <laughs> always do this but you know you probably can't tell too much from it it's 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 sturdy you know um, I will say that um, sometimes when you have a cards like this with the, um, the dark backing, the sides can start to chip. I've only had it for a few days, but so far they're, they're good. Um, they shuffle, you know, very nicely. They're, they're slidey. Um, I've just taken a card out. I will put it back in so that we have things in order. The cards come in alphabetical order in the box. So I've put them back in that order for the purposes of this. And without further ado, I've only rambled for nine minutes before getting to the cards. So that's pretty good for me as a first impressions. Uh, I will get straight to the cards. And all of these cards you can look at on the Kickstarter campaign, which is still, uh, you know, there on Kickstarter. You can have a look at it. Um, all the artwork was done. So all of the cards are right there. You can see that imagery, um, but for the walkthrough will show it as well. Blizzard. And I'm wondering if this may pick up on the screen as just being solid white, but there on the bottom, there is a um, horizon line. So you get the sense of snow resting on the ground and a blizzard happening above it. So, you know, immediately to me, this needs no, no keywords or no explanation. 
you know, it is hard to see, things are unclear, maybe it is hard to orient oneself in one's surroundings, it's hard to know where to go in a blizzard like this, maybe you don't know which direction you want to go in if you're in a blizzard like this, certainly this sucks to drive in, I will say, because I live, I live in the territory with lots of blizzards, so um, this is, this is the commuter's nightmare for me, um, but it immediately brings to mind that sense of, uh, of unclarity. There's also something that can be quite, um, kind of claustrophobic about this, I think. Um, even if one is outside in an open space, it can feel really enclosing to not uh, be able to see anything in the distance. So I feel like these, you know, very simple in a way, art and titles can really uh, communicate a lot. Crystallize, which gives me the sense of something um, solidifying, manifesting, becoming real. Um, if you wanted to think of a more negative association for this, something could be um, could be ossifying, right? Becoming becoming overly rigid in a way that may or may not be desirable. So I think that that's an interesting uh, one to think about as well. Decompose is a very important natural process, of course. I'm allergic to mushrooms, so I have some extra associations <laughs> that go with that, but um, you know, they're, they're very important, of course, in breaking down the organic matter into constituent parts and into, into soil and creating space for new life. Do, hopefully these are picking up well, but there's, there's do on a um, spider web here which of course brings to mind uh, morning, for me brings to mind springtime. Let's just see as an example, um, keywords that are provided in the guidebook here for do are beginnings, purity, and fresh. Do is certainly fresh and refreshing. Drought brings to mind ideas of, of lack, of need, maybe needing to conserve resources. Earthquake, very disruptive, of course potentially destructive, divisive, a jolt, um, shaking up the status quo you could think of, um, you could think of being being jolted out of one's comfort zone with an earthquake. Um, this is, you know, these are these are really great, I think. Um, so, so simple in so many ways, but yet I think so many meanings can be um, gained from this, and I think it'll work really well as a um, combination with, with tarot decks as well. Erosion, think of breaking down over time. There could be a sense of loss with something like erosion, a need to protect against being worn down, protect oneself against being worn down by by pressures, um, pressures from other people or from the environment. Fire. When I first saw the card uh, for fire, I, you know, of course couldn't help but think about the fact that there are so many, so many wildfires right now and so much um, devastation in you know, that have at their root human causes and that so many people are being displaced and, and put in danger 
by those fires. But of course, you know, wildfires also, um, you know, need not be human caused in that way and do, um, you know, clear away uh, the dead, dead brush and things like that and clear away space for new growth as well. So while inevitably this card does um, bring up some feelings right now about um, the forest fires that are happening and the, you know, worrying for folks' safety and you know, anger at at what's happening in various ways. Um, that need not be the meaning that comes up for this card. But it is what comes up now. Anger. Flood. Could think in terms of uh, water here and think about being um, overwhelmed with emotion. When you think about a flood. Could think about uh, things being washed away. That maybe need to be washed away or maybe don't need to be washed away, depending. Could think of um, too much of a good thing, right? Water is obviously... Um, absolutely vital for, for life, but a flood can also be very destructive. Fog, a sense of kind of mistiness. It's not as hard to see as the blizzard with the fog, but it does certainly obscure things. You know, fog can give a sense of mystery, I think. fossilize. This for me has some similar, perhaps similar connotations as, as crystallize in terms of um, something becoming solid. But there could also be additional meanings like um, something, something passing out of use, perhaps. Uh, fossilizes you know it's been in place for a long time undisturbed so it um, it fossilizes could think about the past and ancestors even with fossils who used to be here I really love fossils also. I love seeing fossils when I'm hiking in this um, nautilus fossil there is as well I will mention um, I'm not sure if I have it here we got with the Kickstarter one little extra. Uh, yeah, I do. I do have it to show you, um, which is these um, shiny Nautilus uh, stickers, which are also in the in the shop right now. Frost. Frost is like that that sign that cold is coming or that cold is hanging on, thinking about planting and wanting to avoid um, that last frost in the spring or the first frost in the fall turning to winter. Germinates. I love the word germinate. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like it's... Um, new growth, right? Um, you could be um, incubating an idea or a project or a, a new relationship emerging. Lots of things could be, could be germinating, right? And think about the kinds of um, conditions that need to be in place for this to happen. Germinating a seed requires some pretty specific, um, you know, temperatures and, and water and perhaps soil, sunlight, you know, there needs to be that, that balance that allows for this, um, this emergence to happen. Geyser, explosive, you know, an, an outburst. This could be an outburst of emotion thinking about water. 
I've mostly been thinking about this deck just in these kind of ways, intuitive um, responses to, to the cards as opposed to the keywords. The keywords are fine. Um, I don't find that they're really necessary with a deck like this um, for me, but folks may appreciate them. Now, Haboob I had never heard of before. I had to look up what is a Haboob and is that in fact how you pronounce that word, which it seems to be. Um, and this refers to a sandstorm as is depicted in the the image here. And um, if you're interested in learning more about Haboobs, there is an entire Wikipedia article and a number of other websites that talk about them and where they occur. Um, they can occur in all different places, um, in, in Africa, in Australia, in North America, in East Asia, or sorry, in West Asia, excuse me, in West Asia. Um, the name is, um, the name comes from Sudan, I believe, Haboob. Hail. This hail to me looks like little golf balls, but. <laughs> hail is, is definitely has the capacity to be disruptive, right? It's like being, um, you know, something just kind of smacking you, right? Seemingly out of nowhere because hail can come up pretty quickly. Hurricane. I like this top-down view of the hurricane with the, the land masses um, and the water underneath. Very disruptive energy as well. Can also think, you know, themes around, you know, things being cyclical or spiralic with that image as well. Landslide. With a card like this, you could think about um, the, for, for me, a lot of these things go into elemental associations. So thinking about the associations of um, earth with things like solidity, foundations, um, groundedness, and, and a landslide really disrupting those things. Maybe disrupting a sense of security, seemingly secure foundations being um, moved around, a sense of heaviness um, coming in where there wasn't one before, lots of things that could come up with a landslide. Meteor, this is one of my favorite um, cards in the deck, just visually. I took a course, um, an online module with the edX, online learning website edX, on different historical kinds of divination. And one of them that they talk about in the course is um, predicting and reading the significance of meteors. And the idea that a meteor was, um, was thought to signal a very important event or a major event um, in society and governance and history. And so for me, that's what comes up with the meteor is a, is a sign of something, a sign of something big. Rain. This feels like kind of a gloomy depiction of rain, um, but I really like, of course, rain. And rain is so necessary for, for growth. But rain could also, you know, disrupt your outdoor plans potentially. So lots of ideas about, about rain. Uh, also emotional with the water there. Rainbow. Rainbows for me are hopeful optimistic and magical. Smoke. Smoke to me is also a, a card that, you know, perhaps a little bit like meteor um, could be a sign of something. You know, it's a sign of fire, right? You often would see smoke first. Um, if you're outside, you'd see smoke first before you would see fire. And I particularly think of that, you know, with the trees, it makes me again think of 
uh, forest fires just right now but you know also smoke can be used in in cleansing smoke can be can be very dangerous though for humans so lots to think about snow um, I hate the snow <laughs> I, I hate the snow and live in central Ontario. It's a challenge. Um, for me, I think of snow and I think of it as a, as a kind of obstacle. Um, particularly thinking about, you know, getting around safely for me. Um, snow is a challenge. But there's also something very peaceful about, about snow and the, the visual of snow on, um, you know, on the bare tree branches. That sense of quiet that comes with that. And the idea that um, you know, so many are hibernating at this time. Uh, animals and, uh, you know, the seeds, plants that return every year are kind of hibernating while it's snowing. Snor storm, disruptive. You know, you think about the idea of, of describing how um, one feels as stormy or tempestuous or thinking about a tempest very disruptive and there's no tempest card that's the one that I would have added sun you can think of all the associations of the sun card um, you know in tarot if you want but just think about um, warmth and illumination and joy The sun gives sun dog which I also looked up because I wasn't sure what this um, like I know what it means visually I guess in terms of the um, kind of reflections the bright reflections that are seen on either side of the sun being a sun dog but I didn't know what um, was involved in their formation and it is actually um, ice crystals that leads us to see these. So that's interesting to think of the heat of the sun interacting with uh, the cold of ice crystals to create this. Supernova feels very grand scale compared to the other um, cards in this deck. You know, being being a, a Phenomena of space. Tide. For me, tide has lunar associations, of course, because the moon. Um, you know, the moon's role in the formation of the tides. But this card also, of course, think about all of the, the life uh, that is in tidal pools. Tornado very um, scary to to be in I've experienced a tornado and this one definitely has that sense of um, disrupt disruptiveness excuse me with all the the debris there Tsunami, also very disruptive and potentially very dangerous. Wall of water. Volcano feels like for me it has some of the same um, associations as something like geyser, though not with the, the water um, associations built in. Definitely explosive, very fiery. You know, thinking about eruptions. And again, these kinds of words that, you know, an eruption, of course, refers to a volcano. But, you know, we could also describe an eruption as, you know, someone having a having an outburst of some sort of, of passion, for example, as, as um, eruptive. And finally, wind. 
which you could bring in associations with the element of air and you know swiftness that we think of when we think of wind. So that is the Phenomena Oracle by Jessica Bott of Cracked Amethyst, uh, the newest oracle deck in my collection. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if this is a deck that you backed, um, if you have received it and you're enjoying it, what you think. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.